All right, so in continuing, I want to do a quick review of what we've done so far, making our poster. Because we've, we've designed uh, different elements <laughs> to go with this. And all of these tutorials in this playlist have so far been about making a title flag, right? Based on a sketch, modifying typefaces that I, I downloaded from defont.com and then use them as a way to kind of help me get to a full vector design. Now, just like when you're modifying other people's pixels, you wanna make sure that you didn't just take the, the typeface as is. Not that that's wrong. A lot of times you can do that, right? Like, Typefaces come with Word, come with Google, that you're allowed to use for whatever purpose. But certain designer typefaces, especially off of Defont, will come with certain restricted rights like Creative Commons. And so you just want to make sure that with Illustrator, you create outlines, you play with their placement, and you modify them. So the ones I didn't modify much were this one and this one, but you can see I did change them to fit my purposes quite a bit, especially in terms of the spacing in between the letters and whether they are what's called in Illustrator sheared or not, like how, how much they bend, if they're on a path or not. And then my main focal point for my main logo type, this is not at all recognizable to any of these, but these letter forms help me get here. And it was informed by my sketch, but then improved upon my sketch, I think. And then I took this little special effect from this old comic called The Elementals, and I just wrapped it around. I thought it made it look kind of Indiana Jones adventure -y. I liked that. So, so this is my black and white vector. The only white in it are the strokes around the big letters, so I get that nice overlap. But everything else is just a cutout of black shapes. So now I'm on the poster layout. And what I've done is I've simply combined it with my other element, my spot illustration. And my spot illustration from assignment seven has half tones in it. This is the, the digital one without a lot of the half, half tone separations, like really strong, but you've got subtle half tones in it, which I like. And then we have this clean vector brought in as an EPS, as a smart object on top. Now I still have, just like I did for my spot illustration, the, the three backgrounds, bless you, behind. So that helps me see where the white is and kind of how that's working. All right, so that is almost a poster. It's just not all that interesting yet, right? So the steps I have left, I wanna color my Elementals logo type. And I can do that in Illustrator if I wanted to, but in a lot of ways, it's easier to do it in Photoshop, in my opinion. But I'll show you kind of the different ways we can do that. And then I also wanna put in a background. So what do I do? I do a Google image search and I look for backgrounds. And I kept them somewhere. <laughs> Let's see. Clearly I didn't keep them here. Oh, here they are. I did. So I found a lot of, I did a, a water search, right? I'll just go through them really quickly. And I had an idea of kind of a patterned Asian background. Like I knew there'd probably be some scrapbooking textures that someone had, had scanned in. But this is like a painting that was really crazy, but I just thought, well, let's look at it. This one is, is kind of chain mail. This is half tone of something that looks really depressing but I liked how it looked kind of water damaged and streaky. 
And so I don't think if I used it, you'll see that there's like a line of prisoners <laughs> cropped in. Instead, I just want this kind of textural halftone to be used. Here is, you know, just kind of a stock photo of bubbles. Here is nice watercolor gradations. Here is paper texture, because I hate how clean every digital thing is. And sometimes just overlaying a paper texture will do a lot to make it feel more accessible to the viewer. Here's that kind of, um, I think this was actually wrapping paper design. And then this was one that was kind of cool. It's, a, it's tiled kind of collage cutouts that look like blue gemstones. So a different take on it. So none of those is just right on. And I wouldn't want to just take a background that I found, even if it was public domain, it probably wouldn't be the very best thing for my image. So what I do is I use my compositing skills and I bring all of these together. And then from bringing them together, mixing them with different layer styles and opacities, I got these different textures. And then mixing all of those together, you can see all of them. These are all just from those textures. I got this. So this is the background I want to use. It's subtle, but every background layer contributes something. Because I wanted some color to complement my illustration. I wanted a lot of texture so that it doesn't just look good on a computer screen, because this is a poster. Think of it as being like a movie poster. If you see it at a bus stop or something, you're going to be able to see it up close, and you want to have integrity to everything instead of it just being one solid background color or even just a solid gradation. Now, what it still needs is a clean border. And right now it doesn't have that, but that will be easy to put in. But this is the background I kind of worked with. So before I color my logo type, it's good to have at least a general idea of your background because then the colors of your logo type should work with that background. So what I'm going to do is simply go to the top layer here, hold down Option, say Layer, Merge Visible. Of course, when I'm looking for background images to move together, I was looking for four megapixels or larger images, knowing that I would probably enlarge quite a few of them. But it's generally OK to soften your background, unless you're wanting really, really clean lines, then go for something that's more 10 megapixels or bigger. So now I'm going to take that merged copy that's flattened at 100%, select it all, copy it, and then I will move it on top of my black background layer here, paste it in, and then grow it to fit the native resolution of my image. All right. So just that background, which is behind everything, you see that it adds a component. It breaks up the space. And even though it's very subtle, <coughs> I like that better than just plain white. And what I can do is actually turn on the gray background behind it, and I can play with different layer styles. So maybe something kind of like that. It's a little bit darker. But I wanted it to look water damaged and kind of complicated. And I can play with the hue, and, and I'll have all those options. So I am going to probably stretch it a little bit. This is my custom background. Stretch it up and down. All right, next. Now you can use any kind of texture. You can use uh, a brick wall or something. If I wanted a, a clean border, this is how I do it. I go on top of everything. And then I simply use my rectangular marquee tool and cut out a shape. And then I'm going to fill that with white. 
have to be on a new layer for this. So this is, it's like a little masking border. I like to do it this way so it doesn't get affected by anything I do underneath. Then I'm going to duplicate that, Command J, move that to the bottom, holding down Shift so it locks in place. So now I have an exactly equal border on the top and bottom. Then Command J, Command T, hold down Shift so it locks to 90 degrees. and then hold down shift so it locks its width. Then Command J. And I want all of you to have a clean white border around your image. It cleans it up for printing, it makes sure you have space for matting, and it makes sure you don't have, it does, you don't have anything that's gonna surprise you right at the edge that you didn't notice. Now notice, that's not, that's all separate. I'm going to merge these layers together and then call this my white border. And I'll lock it. This is all separate from what's going on underneath. So as I do kind of color experiments and I move things around, that border <coughs> stays locked and I'm looking through it. Because right now I'm already thinking I want to take this. Actually, I want to take everything. Except the backgrounds and just move them down a little bit. So I can select multiple layers, just use my arrow keys and place it. But I like that. The blue on the bottom, the blue at the top, the kind of warm colors flowing through, it feels like it supports it. All right. So now, if those are kind of the colors and the feel I'm getting from my poster, what colors are going to work well? for the, the typeface and kind of filling in this kind of adventurous cutout here. So let's go back to some of my inspirations. This was that early comic book example. And if I use really bright colors like that, which I'm kind of tempted to do just because it's cheesy, does that work with the background? And yeah, it kind of does. It gets attention. So that might be where I start. And this gives me a good, good chance. My design is, is different than this design, but what you can see here is that each, each letter form is clearly a different flat color. But ultimately, because it's a comic book, it's not like digitally flat. It has this nice printed texture to it. So how can I get that? Well, one way I can do that is to save my progress here and then go back to Illustrator because you can do a lot of coloring within Illustrator. So I'm going to open up my finished black and white EPS in Illustrator. I've saved my background and my layout work in Photoshop. And in Illustrator, I have this example already put in. So what I'm going to do is simply move that example so I can steal the colors easily, and then lock it. And then I like to be on the outside of the artboard here with my EPS just so I see what the white's doing clearly. Now I'm going to unlock all of these others, and just so I don't get confused, I'm first going to take the ones that aren't showing all of these and unlock them and erase them all. And I'll save this as a different name, as a different EPS. So hold down Command, select all of these that are turned off, delete them. Those are all my typeface layers, all those things. And now I'm going to save it with a different name. So instead of the title flag black vector, this is going to be my title flag color vector as an EPS. And I should check if it will let me do.